I changed the breakdown exercises segment of the live stream to a new format. Uh, instead of talking about all the scientific shit and uh, like, oh, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy this, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy that, I, I, I figured I'm going to rank the exercises as the, the way you should introduce them in your fucking training. So let's say. When you are training for fucking uh, awesome fucking hypertrophy, you need three kinds of moves. You need a primer, a main move, and a finisher. Or more finishers, <laughs> or main, more main moves. But the idea is, a primer is an exercise that's going to be used to prepare your body to do a main move. A main move is the main move. Is the move you're going to be developing strength. Is the move you're going to be developing your fucking myofibular hypertrophy. It's the actual contractile tissues in your body. And a finisher is a, a move that is optimal for you to like get a gnarly fucking pump to end your fucking wor wor workout. Like one of the best finishers, for instance, is lateral raises. You went there, you did overhead presses, you are fucking okay. You stimulated a ton of growth and strength in your body. And now you introduce lateral raises and fucking, yo, lateral raises to finish the workout. Do the, introduce that sarcoplasmic hypertrophy and make your body fill the fuck up. Other styles of finishers are, are exercises that emphasize a stretch-mediated hypertrophy, exercises that put you through a stretch position, like the other exercise that we might hit today if I still have enough gas, the stiff-legged deadlifts. So let's go, let's take a, let, let's start this fucking shit. Oh yeah. So first, overhead presses. The range of motion on the overhead press, it's not, not, you can't exaggerate the range of motion. It's not the biggest range of motion in the world, but it's pretty good for fucking shoulder development. For instance, if you're using a fucking dumbbell, the, the range of motion it will be a little bit less because in the dumbbell, the dumbbells go and hit your fucking shoulders, you know? Now, on the overhead press, if you have a good rack position, when you are in the rack position, you, you are fully contracting your... your your front outs to the to the maximum. So the and range of motion, I'm going to give it a fucking five. It's a pretty solid fucking range of motion. Gadoosh. Now, as a primer exercise, a primer exercise is an exercise that you will do in the beginning of your workout to prepare your joints, to prepare your body to do a fucking heavy main move. As a primer, the overhead press, even if you are like, ah, I'm just going to warm up with my overhead presses, I'm going to do overhead presses with a light weight and etc. That's a good idea if you are going to then use an overhead press as a main move, but you will be better off doing something else, you know, like do some lat pull downs. You should be, you can do some fucking triceps extensions, uh, some triceps push downs, and prepare to do a fucking overhead press before doing overhead press as the first move you are introducing to your workout. So as a primer is not that great, I will put a two because mm, let me think about it. Yeah, a two, a two is is. Don't put overhead presses as your first movement in the in, in your routine. Uh, thoughts on netting before or after squats? After squats, always. After squats, for 100%. It's actually what I do in my training, and I feel fucking awesome doing overhead press. I do squats, pull-ups, overhead press. That's the way that I go. That and When I'm doing full body workouts. And as a main fucking move, Yo, this is the big four, my baby. It's one of the best main moves that you can ever introduce to your workout. So it's a six, bro. A full fucking six. That's the best usage for the overhead press. And as a finisher, I like to use the overhead press sometimes with... Uh, let's say I'm doing... Uh, let me think. Let's say I'm doing uh, leg and shoulders because I'm fucking old school, baby, and that's the way that I roll sometimes. And <clears throat> I go there, do my leg workout, and I do. And when I'm go, when I'm doing shoulders, I don't use the overhead press as, as my main move because I'm already fucking fried from destroying my legs, and I don't have an, a, a lot of fucking strength. So as a finisher, I use light overhead presses. I put like 
65% of my one rep max or something like that. I just know how much weight I can put to go to eight to 10 reps. And I do super sets with lateral raises and reverse lateral raises, do our circuits with lateral raises and incline lateral raises. So as a finisher, it's pretty interesting. It's not, it's not nothing to write home about, but it's above average. It's, you just need to program it with, 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 with the other exercises so you can reap the most benefits from it. And it will, the, the idea here, is because you can shove a fuck ton of blood and get a gnarly pump on the front delts. And usually when you are going super heavy, the best growth will come from the super heavy stuff, but sometimes you just need to grab a pump, you know? And I think the overhead press is good for that if you introduce supersets to it. So let me take one, one, one little plate from it because you need to introduce supersets for it to be used for it to not be useless, you know? If you don't do supersets and you just go to high reps on the overhead press, I don't know what the fuck you are doing, okay? <laughs> go As the best usage, uh, now moving down, the minimal volume from the overhead press is three. The, this is the volume that you need to be introducing overhead presses every week. Uh, three sets of overhead presses is more than enough to maintain your fucking shoulders the size they are. Uh, the minimal effective volume with, that will provide you with, with slow sustain gains that will not be really stressful in your recoverability will be right around three sets to six sets. Uh, the maximum adaptable volume, which is the, the a volume where you will need to be intelligent about how you are structuring your program, but it's still pretty man manageable in the fatigue department, and you will not need to have crazy, you not, will not need to taper off on other aspects of hypertrophy too much to hit your MAV. So that's six to 10 sets a week. And the maximum recoverable volume, which is when you are completely focusing on fucking developing your shoulders and you will have to fucking reduce the volume of other body parts, reduce the volume on your, of your leg workouts, of your chest workouts, of your back workouts to hit maximum recoverable volume on the overhead press that's right around 12 to 15 sets a week and yo i didn't saw that it was you mark brother thank you for becoming a founding member bro it it was you right thank you so much man yo you you, you I, I can't express my my gratitude man thank you so fucking much brother hell fucking yeah man oh fuck so the best usage for the overhead press is as a main move. Uh, that's why he scored a six as a main move. It's a foundational work. It's something that will build strength and will build size simultaneously. And to do that, you need to be introducing the uh, four to six rep range. You, and the thing about this rep range is that you need to be really careful because I want you to use the heaviest weights possible but what will determine when you stop the set is not the usual like, yo, if it's if I can do two more reps, uh, add weight. If I can do two reps, uh, uh, lower the weights. With the overhead press, I want you to think a different way. Uh, with the overhead press, I want you to pay attention to when you start putting your back, uh, like overextending your back. That's the point to stop. You don't really think about, uh, I put reps in reserve down there, but I put a, a four just so you know. It, you need to stay the fuck away from failure. And the thing you need to pay attention to stop your fucking set is, I, I did I start to turn this into a bench press, essentially? Am I overstanding my fucking back? The second that happens, the set is over, bro. You don't grind fucking reps because the overhead press is a destroyer for, destroyer of lower backs if you are also squatting and doing deadlifts and everything, okay? So be really mindful of that. If you have that tendency of overstanding, and I have, and I fucked my back up doing this motherfucking thing, and then consider using military presses instead of the overhead press. The gains are not going to be that great for strength, but at least you are you are preserving your back from uh, your lower back from extra stimulus, you know, because pretty much everything that a power building methodology uh, attacks kind of attacks the lower back simultaneously. So you need to be you, you need to take that in consideration when programming. 
uh, rest times, three to five minutes. The overhead press, although it, it is a, a movement that stimulates your central nervous system a lot because the weight, there's a spi uh, an axial loading of the spine, meaning there's compression coming from the weight going against gravity, stacking your fucking spine, uh, uh, putting pressure on your spine, essentially. And remember, if you are braced, you are fully braced, your spine is designed to fucking take pressure. It's desi designed to, like bounce bounce things from it so the rest times right around three to five minutes is not as crazy as fucking squats and deadlifts where i would recommend you to go from four to ten minutes even so that's it about the, these recommendations reps in reserve four and don't really pay attention to reps and reserve don't pay attention to bar speed just pay attention to your back the second you start overextending finish your set Strength standards, if you are a novice, I still, uh, I, I need to change, it's written beginner there, but the, the better, the better word for it is novice. A novice is a guy that is training for three months to one year, and the strength that you need to be having in this movement is 60% of your body weight. Shoot for 60% of your body weight, work until you hit, hit that mark, using the four to six rep ranges and three to five sets per workout, and the volume landmarks that I put above it, like, Three to six sets a week is pretty much what you need to stay progressing at least slowly. And the other volume landmarks, if you are a beginner, don't, don't worry about them too much because when you are a beginner, you have newbie gains at your side and you can improve without much thought, bro. And intermediates, 80% of your body weight. And listen, this is, this is already like pretty significant. It doesn't look like much. It doesn't look because you, you see people doing jerks and cleaning jerks and shit on crossfit with like a hundred kilos but listen doing a strict overhead press with 80 percent of your body weight is a feat of strength okay like one your your entire body body weight pretty much puts you in advanced mode you know if you don't use leg drive if you don't use the 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 acceleration that were provided from your legs to fucking press the weight up Bro, if you just use shoulder and triceps to move your entire body weight in the overhead press, post the video to me and I will watch it and just say, I will just watch it and stand like this. Hell yeah. Fucking A. Because that, that's a feat of strength, bro. That's a feat of fucking strength. As for deloads, it's the basic fucking deload that I always recommend for every fucking lift. For a beginner, 16 every 16 weeks. For an intermediate, every 8 weeks. And for advanced people, every 4 fucking weeks. Hell yeah, Mark. Thank you, bro. Thank you once again. So that's it for the overhead press. I was trying to make the, the videos where I'm breaking down the exercise slightly shorter but i'm do I, now i'm thinking that maybe i made it too short well, what do you guys think do you guys think that this is an interesting way to to cover these exercises or do you prefer this motherfucking shit where i'm go with way more information about like psychoplasmic hypertrophy and specific ways to develop power and to develop strength and wow strength let me know on the comments if uh, uh on the comments later okay